Sleep problems are extremely common and pretty much everyone has them at some point. In this video, I will explain the most important nutrients that are low in virtually everyone with insomnia, talk about how they improve your sleep and also explain how to replenish them correctly. Okay, so to get started, you need to understand that sleep problems, especially problems falling asleep, are really a symptom of a larger issue, which is too much stress and an overactive nervous system. As you know, the body reacts to stress through its nervous system, especially the autonomic nervous system that you can't really control directly. The autonomic nervous system is divided into two parts, the sympathetic and the parasympathetic part. The sympathetic nervous system is responsible for the fight or flight response and the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for the rest and digest response. What that means is that in a stressful situation, your sympathetic nervous system will kick in. It will release things like adrenaline and cortisol. It will increase your blood pressure and tense your muscles. This is all done to get you to act, to get you going, and to get you to respond to any type of danger that might arise. Now, when that stressful situation is over, when you're no longer in danger, in theory, your parasympathetic nervous system should take over again. It's the one that ensures health through processes like digestion, detoxification, and relaxation. However, when the parasympathetic response doesn't work right, you will run into various types of problems, one of them being sleep problems because you're just so tensed up, you're in the active survival mode and not in the rest and recovery mode. And this is also where nutrient deficiencies come into play. Chronic stress and sympathetic dominance, so a situation where your sympathetic nervous system is constantly active, deplete certain nutrients. And if you don't replenish them, you won't get rid of your sleep problems. The most important here are the three calming minerals, calcium, magnesium, and zinc. Let's go through each and explain what their role is in calming you down and helping you fall asleep. First, we have magnesium, which is a natural beta blocker. That means it blocks the action of adrenaline and its effect on your body. It also binds to and activates GABA receptors. GABA is a neurotransmitter that blocks impulses between nerve cells in the brain. So unlike adrenaline, which gets you going, GABA helps you calm down. But if you're magnesium deficient, all this won't work right and your nervous system gets stuck in fight or flight. Magnesium also helps your muscle cells relax because it pushes calcium out of them where it belongs. Too much calcium inside the muscle cell will lead it to constantly contract. Unfortunately, magnesium deficiency is very common today and it's probably one of the most common nutrient deficiencies we see in people. The two main causes for this are chronic stress, which we already talked about, and food processing, which strips the foods of most of its magnesium. Next, we have calcium, which works together with magnesium to regulate cell permeability. Like I said before, it's supposed to sit mainly outside of the cell to help regulate how receptive your cell is to nutrients and nerve signals. So it basically shields the cell from overstimulation. If you have a calcium deficiency or biounavailable calcium, then your cells will be overly receptive to any type of signal or stressor, which in turn means your whole nervous system will be overly receptive to outside signals. And lastly, we have zinc. It is also critical for a healthy neurotransmitter balance because it's a cofactor in serotonin production. What many people don't know is that serotonin is a precursor to melatonin, the primary sleep hormone. So without sufficient zinc, you won't be producing enough melatonin. Zinc also helps lower excessive copper, which is a very stimulating mineral that many people have too much of in their bodies. Next to a magnesium deficiency, a copper overload is also a very common problem that many people have. So to wrap up the first part of this video, these are the three essential nutrients for optimal sleep, calcium, magnesium, and zinc. That's because they calm down your brain and nervous system and also help relax your muscles. In terms of supplementation, you want to start slow and with low doses. And the key is also to take them regularly throughout the day and not just right before bed. Now, your optimal dosage is always individual, but in general, most people should take between 200 to 500 milligrams of magnesium. Calcium is a little more complicated 
because of the risk of tissue calcification, which is a rabbit hole in and of itself. Some practitioners recommend that you don't supplement calcium at all and only get it from natural food sources. I believe that this has to be decided on a case-by-case -case basis because it always depends on your current calcium status. If you decide to supplement, you will usually want to take between 400 to 1200 milligrams. Lastly, zinc will usually be prescribed in a dosage from 10 to 40 milligrams. But if you don't know your current zinc status, then it's better to stick to a low dose of 10 to 20 milligrams. As always, the best thing is to get your nutrient levels tested correctly and then work with a professional on fixing your deficiencies and imbalances. Great, now that we talked about the basic nutrients to help calm you down, we also want to talk at other nutrients that are important for promoting healthy sleep. And for this, we have to look at the cofactors for healthy melatonin production. Now, of course, you can always directly supplement melatonin, but this doesn't really get to the root cause of things because you want to optimize your biochemistry to produce sufficient melatonin levels on its own. In general, your melatonin production is based on the following pathway. First, you consume dietary protein, which is then broken down into its individual amino acids. Of these amino acids, your body will grab tryptophan and turn it into 5-HTP, which is then later turned into serotonin, which is then used for the production of melatonin. In these biochemical pathways, there's always a huge number of nutrients involved, so it's difficult to include all of them. You will now see a list of the most important nutrients for each conversion step. Besides the ones we already talked about, the two critical ones here are vitamin B6 and SAMe. Sufficient vitamin B6 levels have been directly associated with healthy serotonin and melatonin production. Really, if you're lacking this vitamin, then your body will not be producing them at a sufficient rate. This not only impacts your sleep quality, but also your mental health and mood. I talk about this in much more detail in a different video. SAMe is another critical nutrient that many people aren't aware of. It regulates methylation, which is a topic so complex that I can't discuss it in this video. Basically, what you have to understand is that melatonin is pretty much just serotonin with a methyl group attached. If you don't have enough of these methyl groups, for example from SAMe, your body won't be able to do this last step in the melatonin synthesis pathway. Now, the huge mistake that many beginners make when they see these lists of nutrients is that they go online, buy a bunch of supplements, and start taking all of them. Please don't do that. Instead, like I said before, get your nutrient levels tested correctly, if necessary work with a professional, and go from there. It's much safer and will save you all the side effects and a lot of money. Okay, before I wrap up this video, I also want to talk about two more nutrients that you often see associated with sleep quality online. And that's omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin D. Omega-3 basically decreases inflammation and it can also decrease inflammation in the brain, which helps overall calming and sleep quality. Vitamin D, on the other hand, is important because vitamin D receptors are found in the part of the brain that is responsible for melatonin synthesis. Now, even though a lot of people are omega-3 and vitamin D deficient, you still want to be careful here with supplementation, especially in high doses. For omega-3, that's because a lot of cheap supplements are somewhat rancid, which then does more harm than good. And for vitamin D, very high doses will deplete your magnesium. So you're bringing one thing up, while bringing the other down. Again, I recommend you start with low doses, focus on the most important players first, so the calming nutrients, and then go from there. I hope you liked this video and I see you in the next one.